Merry Christmas everybody and happy holidays from everybody here at Pedalbox to all of our subscribers, our viewers, everybody who has contributed, collaborated with us or done anything with Pedalbox in the last four years, particularly in 2021 to all of our new viewers and subscribers. With multiple rounds of Christmas dinner done and the impending food coma rapidly approaching, I thought it'd be nice to just take a sit down and look back at some of 2021 on Pedalbox and what we've got coming up in 2022 for you next year. So last year we broke the 1000 subscriber mark which was a huge milestone and although we haven't really been chasing the milestone for the sake of doing it, it's just nice to have people on the journey with us. We've added 60% more to that this year and we're nearly at 1600 subscribers. It'd be really cool if we can make that before the end of 2021, ready for 22, but we're pretty close so it'll definitely do for now. We've also managed to add 42,000 views which is a little under half of the entire total of the channel. So that's quite cool, we are approaching 100,000 views on the channel in total and m nearly half of them come from this year alone which is really really good. It kind of goes with the massive explosion in subscribers compared to the previous three years of 1,000 now up to 1,600. Now for the last half of the year we've also managed to be monetized which is really really nice so there's a few more ads come in and I've tried not to saturate it too badly but those adverts that you have seen have meant that we've managed to keep the arc lights on and the gas flowing into the welding torch so we can keep the project going a little bit easier and in addition to that the number of patrons that we have has gone up. We now have 20 patrons so far which is a pretty good number considering the number of subscribers and views and everything else that we have and they've gone and helped us buy loads of different parts for the car and I'll come on to some of that in a little while. Now for those of you who like numbers, stats and a little bit of data, have I got some information for you. Here is the top 10 videos this year and number one is not the kit car. Despite being 49 of the 90 episodes, a little over half of all of the episodes, not including the live streams and a few other little announcements here and there, the uh, kit car doesn't actually make it into the top 10 videos of 2021 and only really barely makes it into the top 10 of all time. So the top 10 of this year, number one is the 944 getting the exhaust and intake modifications done. This is James's 944 uh, from 1984 from memory, it's a B-Reg and we did a full new stainless steel exhaust on it, put a new intake on the front with a cone filter on and we never actually got round to finishing off that intake build and putting in a nice air dam around it to stop it pulling in hot air from the engine because he's actually sold the car now. So that'll be one of the very few videos of that car on this channel and he's carless at the moment in terms of something fun he's just got his boring daily so James doesn't actually have an interesting car that we can steal and make content on the channel <laughs> So far, all of the extra cars from around our fleet are doing way better in views because number two is the Mazda MX-5 Turbo that we brought in to swap out the Bilstein shocks and put on the Meister R's. That's number two on our list and number three is obviously the SD1. Of course it's the SD1 because everybody loves the SD1. And it's really galling we can't have as much content because there's so many stalling blocks been in the way of getting that done. There's still the big brakes to add on, although the new big radiator from last Christmas is in now. The car's been repainted, it's been back. We've got a lot more to do to it and we're just waiting on some new parts coming along to get that build going further. Number five is one of my cars, that's the Thunderbird that comes in when we took all of the body off the front and we did a full tear down on that. And then there's a couple of shorts and the Golf makes it in with having the big brakes done. It's a fairly popular upgrade going to the uh, much bigger 312mm brakes. That's in at number seven, followed by another short that we did on the Thunderbird and then another two Golf videos. And actually number 11 is the first time the kit car actually makes an appearance in the top video ranking. And that's episode one, which has literally been up the longest so you kind of expect that to be up top but the latest video that we have in the top 20 is number 76 when we started putting bodywork on the car and that I think is number according to my notes that's number 16 at the moment and there's a bunch more 944 SD1 and Thunderbird in the mix before you get down from that from 12 which is another episode on the kit car down to 16 where the most recent one that sits in the top 20 is. 
Now the top 10 all time video looks a little bit different, but number one and number two are exactly the same as they were for the 2021 rundown. That is the 944 exhaust and intake, followed by the MX-5, and then down at number six this time is the first entry of the kit car. And that comes in from, I think it was episode one again, coming in at number six, which again, it makes sense. It's the longest video that's been up. So it kind of figures that it would have the highest uh, or very high numbers compared to some of the more recent ones. Now, going back to our patrons for a moment, finally, they're going to see a little bit of payoff from a lot of teasing that we did about the first things that they wholly bought for us, which was this lovely stainless steel exhaust, which we've had all welded up and is now ready to go back on the car once it's not cold, wet and or dark outside and we can put it on and get some really nice shots of it all installed under that heat shield that we put in fairly recently. Now, we appreciate the contributions our patrons make, obviously, and if you would like to help us, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show, join up from as little as a dollar a month up to $10 at the moment, and that $10 top tier is going to get better fairly soon, because I'm going to add in a new perk, which gives a 10% off discount for any of the merch in our shop. So I'll produce a code that we'll use on that and we'll give to you, obviously, when you become a patron, and then you can get 10% off on top of whatever other deals we put on the shop. So if you go to shop.pedalbox.show, there will be various things for sale. There's t-shirts, hats, mugs, all sorts of bits and pieces, and anything you buy that may or may not already have an offer on, some of the mugs are currently on offer, um, will get an extra 10% off if you're one of our top tier patrons. So that's coming, going to be coming soon, and we're also looking at trying to get some more content, some more behind the scenes things, like the YouTube shorts, but more just for the patrons, so we can just pop them up whenever we're working on the car and just give you a heads up of what's going down actually in real time, rather than having to wait for the episodes to come out. So that'll hopefully be coming in 2022 as well. Now what else is coming up in 2022? We have a lot planned, and we've had a lot of this planned basically since 2020, because this was the big plan for the summer period, was to go out and film loads more things, go to more events, all sorts of stuff. We managed to get to Retro Rides this year, to the gathering at Shelsley Walsh, but we didn't manage to get to the Retro Rides Weekender. Now hopefully in 2022 we are going to get to the Retro Rides Weekender, and that will be another great show. Although we tried to get two 15-minute episodes out of the gathering for this year, thinking, oh, well, it'll be a bit smaller and there might not be as many uh, things that we can actually do, we still got an hour and a half worth of edited content. We, we recorded something like four hours of video, and we got an hour and a half of decent content out of it, of things going up the hill and talking to all sorts of different people. So hopefully we can do that again at the weekender and the gathering later this year. If you want to watch a full omnibus of all of those, that has just been released on the channel in the last day or so, so you can go and watch all one and a half hours in one sitting whilst you digest more turkey leftovers. Now, obviously, big thanks to people that we spoke to at Retro Rides this year. We spoke to Hubnut and Living My Boost Life, both of whom have channels. You can look down in the description. You'll find them both down there, so you can go and check them out. And there's a bunch of other people that we spoke to as well, including Laurie from uh, Laurie's Mechanical Marvels, as well as Matt. And they came over a couple of weeks ago, and we made this wonderful creation over here. This is a gingerbread la classic Land Rover Defender 90, although there's some, some discussion as to whether or not it's a little bit G-Wagon or... Mercedes gingerbread wagon as well. No word back from JLR or Benz on what they think about it though, so you should definitely go and pester them into making some sort of comment on what they think this is. Now, it was a really good live stream, and if you haven't watched that already, again, there should be a link up here that you can watch, and I'll put a link in the description as well, and you can go and watch that. Again, whilst you digest more turkey and have a couple of crafty bevies over the holiday period, because that is about three and a half, four hours long, but it was a great stream. It was really good fun to do, and I can't wait to do more stuff with the guys from LMM in the new year. Now, in terms of our projects from 2021, it's been a little bit hit and miss because one of the big problems you have with big, long projects is project burnout. You can get so deep into it that you just can't see the light of day. And if things start getting pushed back and delayed, you end up just struggling to get those little wins that really keep you enamored with the project. And that is something I've had with the kit car recently, with particularly with the weather. Across the back end of this year, it's just not been as good as I'd really hoped it was going to be. 
2020, for all of its terrible problems that it had, it did mean that I got to spend a lot of time at home, and the weather was really, really good. That was pretty much unending summer from about March all the way through until September and October. You just work outside on the car, and I got loads done. As you can see with the videos, where it went from being a very low, flat chassis to really having some shape to it, and looking like a car, it had the framework of the body on. So there was lots and lots of progress made, and I really, really wanted a big milestone achievement at the end of the year, which was to be able to turn the engine and hear it run. And for a bunch of reasons, that didn't happen. Notably, we killed the ECU when we left it connected to the chassis and then welded, and we think we fried it at that point. One way or another, that ECU is dead. But we do have a line on another one, so it's all good. The problem with this year is it's just been one little thing after another that's been getting in the way. It's all those little jobs that you just don't think about until you go, oh yeah, we need to do that, and we need to do that, and then all of a sudden you have a list of 20 or 30 things in the way of you actually doing the big fun thing you really wanted to do. So you have to stagger them, otherwise you just get disheartened, or you might get disheartened, and you kind of lose focus. Now, trying to spread those out just means that actually that big long list has dragged on through the whole year, and it's been kind of kind of a drag on the whole thing. And there's an interesting video that um, Casey Putch did on burnout when he was doing his King Zero project, which I'll put a link to his channel. You can go and have a look at that as well, because the those kind of big custom builds that he's doing, and obviously we're doing to an extent, they don't always translate easily onto YouTube, and that can be a big problem if you're trying to get over the finish line. You think, oh yeah, I'm going to get this thing done, and then and then it'll grow a bit more, and you know you'll get the enthusiasm behind it. And because we've not been able to take it to shows or anything like that in any real capacity, um, it's it, getting people enthused by it is is not helping to maintain my enthusiasm to keep doing it. So I, it's always a push, it's always a push. And this has been really good having the SD1 here and the Thunderbird and the Golf to just get those little wins as you go along. You go, I'm going to do a, a small project like the brake upgrade or like the front clip. Now, obviously, the Thunderbird one turned into a much bigger project as we stripped more and more bits off because, oh, well, we're not going anywhere because we're stuck at home, so we can't do anything. Now, that's disappointing because it means that everything feels like, as I say, more and more of a drag. And when it feels like a drag, it's really hard to push through. And with the weather in 2021 being the way it was, it's been really difficult to sort of keep finishing those little milestones as you go on. Now, with that in mind, inspired by a bunch of other channels on YouTube, including Laurie, who during the first part of lockdown did his lorry goes a little loco where he went through double o track and some really old double o stuff and basically went through boxes of trains that people had sent him and that he had in storage and made small layouts in addition to that i've also been watching quite a number of uh, layout videos from the likes of richard charlie and um dave who are everett junction uh, chadwick uh, model railway and dean park uh, on YouTube, and they've got really fantastic layouts. And I used to have a layout when I was very, very young, and it was nowhere near their kind of level, but I've been a bit inspired to try and do something because that gives me something to do when it is cold, too cold outside to work because you can't feel your fingers, too dark because you can't see what you're doing, or too wet and you just don't want to spend much time outside and you can't do anything on the car. You can't weld, you can't really bolt it back together, you can't do anything useful or substantive when it's horrible weather and in the winter that's when it really drags and you i certainly start to feel that little bit of burnout so i've gone home i've gone back to my folks i went through my box of trains from my youth and i took a bunch out i've sold some and that's kind of financing a small layout which will hopefully be part of a much bigger layout one day in the distant future if a few things actually line up but for the time being this is going to give me a bunch of different skills because in addition to that, a lot of it now you can 3D model and then you can print. So this is really going to help me build up some more of my skills because I'm really kind of, I hit that kind of wall where that's the next big thing that I need to do and I need to learn, I need to get back into doing that. I think a model railway that I can do some work on in the winter and then very slowly drip out across the year some videos just to fill some gaps if we need to, if we're away on a trip or doing something uh, where we can't work on the car and can't edit and can't upload, having something stored up alongside the story time episodes will be really, really useful. So if we do a little bit of work in the winter on, on the trains, 
and then we can spread it out, we can keep the momentum going, and hopefully next year I want to do 52 uploads. I want to average one a week all the way across the year. I tried to do it in 2020 and I missed a little bit. I had probably about four or five weeks where it dropped and, and it really bugged me. And then 2021 had big swathes where we just couldn't get enough work done to actually produce content. So hopefully this is gonna help achieve that milestone. Just for myself, I really, really want to try and accomplish that. So rest assured, nothing is going to be changing here other than hopefully you're going to get a little bit more content and hopefully it's going to come to you a little bit more regularly as well. We're still going to be doing some live streams, probably once or twice a month. We've also got a bunch of series we want to go to. We tried to get to America in 2020 to do a really cool um, series in the summer, which obviously didn't happen. We were very lucky to be able to get to Zip Tie Drags in January 2020, but obviously they didn't do a 2021 a zip tie event. They did a duct tape drags that we had flights, hotels, tickets, you name it. We were ready to go for that and we couldn't get into the country because there was still a federal mandate on blocking travel from the UK into the US when that event happened in October, which was gutting. But if you have been watching all the way since the beginning, thank you so much. And even if you've only just started watching for some reason, thank you for joining us. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, do subscribe, hit the little notification bell. You'll get the notifications when we put a new episode up. We normally try and premiere them so you get a heads up. Uh, we also do our live streams, which you'll get notif notified for as well. If you haven't already, go and check out the merch ready for shipment next year with the t-shirts. We've got long sleeve, short sleeve, beanies, caps, and hoodies as well. We might have some jackets coming and we've got more t-shirt designs coming uh, in the new year too. And if you haven't, do consider being a patron. We really did appreciate everybody who helped us buy this exhaust and there's loads more parts that you've helped us buy as well. And I do need to put a list together of all of the parts that you've helped us buy along the way. So hopefully you'll join us for all of that in 2022. Thank you once again for sticking around through this little bit of a ramble of 2021 and we'll see you next year.